London. It's a city that thrives on art. Aesthetically, from traditional world-famous museums and galleries to the edgy streets of Shoreditch, but economically too. In 2017, the government's Department for Digital Culture, Media and Sport revealed that the number of people employed in the creative industries stood at just over 2 million, accounting for 6% of all UK jobs and the industry contributed £92 billion to the country's economy. But now the UK is poised to leave the European Union in March, following the country's 2016 referendum. This will change everything, from migration to trade. But what impact will it have on arts and culture? Naomi Fitzsimmons rents a studio in Dalston with a group of artists from her master's course at Slade School of Fine Art. Europe has played a huge part in her artistic career so far. So I did a year in Berlin studying there, which was like one of the, I still think one of the most beneficial years of my life really, in terms of just like going somewhere else, learning a new language, but also the development for like my practice. Um, I've also since graduating, um, I did a residency in Prague and done like exhibitions in uh, Lisbon, Vienna and The Hague, which all came about actually from people I was studying with being from these places and then kind of after graduating inviting you to do a show. Naomi works primarily with film and performance-based art. Her practice explores issues surrounding the economy and labour, something that's only been heightened by Brexit. Most people my age have kind of grown up within this backdrop of austerity and have felt the cuts on the arts and culture. It's like kind of the first thing that gets cut, right? So I think that um, is obviously a concern, um, which isn't just for like art and culture, but I think it's a concern for everyone not knowing, you know, the impact that Brexit is going to have on the economy and how that's going to create more cuts. Many artists I spoke to were against Brexit, but looking at the numbers, 52% of the public voted to leave. There must be some who'd like Britain to withdraw from the European Union. I'm meeting Michael Lightfoot, founder of Artists for Brexit, to find out more about what change they'd like to see. We are seeking a, a, a true Brexit, which unfortunately might have to mean that we leave on World Trade Organization terms, but, um, you know, we, we don't actually feel that that would be um, such a bad thing. Michael set up Artists for Brexit as a platform to speak out. I mean, artists don't want to rock the boat, generally, you know. Um, they, and, um, why do you think that is? Why, think, why, why do I think that is? Well, because, I mean, there's a general consensus that's conformed within the arts com community on this. I think there's, I think there's a lot, you know, even before Brexit, there's a there's definitely ideological conformity. I think it, what's happening is not, it's not so. I think that the people, the artists that are pro Brexit, are afraid to speak out because I mean it's it's only going to impact on their careers. Since it launched in January 2018, the group has created pamphlets, literature, and cartoons. In July, in the summer, we we had. Um, we had a big, what we called the big Brexit party, which the Guardian <laughs> termed a Brexit rave. But we had, you know, we had music from Northern Ireland and we had sort of punk music and we had, you know, a whole variety of different kinds of, of music. It was about time that, that their voices were heard. And then we also had an exhibition, which we quite deliberately called The Civil Times because just as much as we are about Brexit, we want to promote civility of discourse. We don't want to do any nasty stuff. For Michael, it's about Britain regaining control of its laws and legislations. But the reality is extremely complicated. The art world doesn't have um, borders as for, other, as for other sectors in a way. So I think basically the community is really, is really strong and thanks to different art fairs and events where basically we celebrate the, uh, the connection with, with, between different countries, I think Brexit won't affect it properly. Across the industry, there's anxiety over Brexit's impact economically and logistically. 
while those artists who support it welcome greater freedom. For some artists, it's provided creative fodder too. This may look like a slightly unusual passport office, but it's actually an exhibition at London's gallery Thaddeus Ropak. Visitors share personal information in return for an ID document. For the artist Tom Sachs, Switzerland is the model of neutrality, a place of economic and political freedom. He's offering these Swiss passports for all, and in doing so, highlighting the artificiality of borders. What happens next? Well, only time will tell. But with the March 29th deadline drawing ever closer, it's not just politicians in the European Union waiting with bated breath. The art world, too, will soon find out just how much things are set to change. Miranda Atty, TRT World, London. The deadline is drawing ever closer and the art world is getting more and more curious. Let's talk about how much she believes things are set to change with Kate Arthurs, Director of Arts in British Council. Hi Kate, welcome to Showcase. Hi there. So people have been commenting on this issue a lot, but do you really think that it's the cause for alarm for the art world after Brexit? Well, we at the British Council have been leading the way in holding discussions with the arts sector and the industry here in the UK about what Brexit really means for them. And what we're hearing loud and clear is that anything that gets in the way of um, movement of objects or that makes digital licensing more difficult will not be good for the sector. And that's why we're pressing really hard for clarity on those subjects. More than anything, what we're hearing the arts industry needs is a, a visa regime that makes it easy for artists and creative professionals to connect with each other. They need a visa regime that is straightforward and simple and accessible. So that's what we're hearing. But the work that we're doing and will continue to do on the ground in Europe is also symbolic, I think, of our appetite to stay connected. So we're working with the Venice Biennale this year and have done for many years. This year we're presenting the work of Cathy Wilkes, who's a Northern Irish artist based in Scotland. And we'll continue to demonstrate that connection to and commitment to working with Europe mm -hmm. over the long term. Mm -hmm. And also in terms of the creative process, I'm really curious about this. Do you feel like mm -hmm. uh, identity and belonging will come up more and more as a theme in artists and curators and exhibitions? Because obviously Britishness is questions more and more these mm -hmm. days. We're already seeing that here in the UK. Some of the most exciting uh, writing, theatre production, uh, exhibitions, in fact, are very much a reflection on what does it mean to be British today? Uh, what does it mean to be an artist living and working in this country? I think that's something that will probably feel familiar to, to Turkish uh, listeners and viewers to this programme. Um, mm -hmm. So we, we work very closely with that sector and that exploration of our national identity is, is a fascinating part of our work at the British Council. I mean, every crisis is obviously an opportunity as well. So how do you feel like, I mean, what would your recommendations be on thriving the, the art scene in this um, process? I think my strongest recommendation to the arts industry is to keep seeking out not just the connections, but also the inspiration that can be found from others who are working internationally. And that's part of what we are trying to do all the time through our teams on the ground. They're out there looking for the most exciting and innovative artistic and cultural practice that's happening. So we're doing that across the whole of the EU. And in Turkey, for example, we, we're working with creative hubs. And creative yeah. hubs are spaces where you know, professionals come and they make work and they, they explore new artistic practice. And actually, I was in, uh, in Bristol, in the southwest of England, at a place called Watershed yesterday, which is a really good example of that. But there mm -hmm. are many of these spaces in, in Turkey and across the European Union. So we're working with Atolier in, in Turkey and partners across yeah. Greece, Serbia and the UK so they can stay connected. But use us 
I think that's the main message. Use the British Council, use our insights, use our networks on the ground and keep mm -hmm. connecting through those. I mean, people are really focused on, on the negative effects, the possible negative effects, but obviously it might have some mm -hmm. positive effects as well. Thank you so much, Kate Arthurs, for joining us on Showcase today. Thank you.